to add a photo match simulation, simply do a right mouse button click on photo match scenes node and select add photo match view. In this scene alignment window, all we need to do is align the vanishing line, the red and the green axis, to the photo's perspective. This box here allows us to control the vertical axis and position it correctly. Of course, we will need a nice photo of our current situation building before the design phase. Once loaded, we can align the axis and once completed, our modeled building will be positioned on top of our photo. To have a precise alignment, we can use the transparency feature. Then we can set the location time in order to have shadows all in the correct position and similar to the other buildings in the photo. Adjusting the time and date up here we will help us to set up the scene before rendering. When we are ready, we can then launch the rendering process by clicking on this button and choosing the appropriate quality and resolution settings. We have automatic sunshine management, means that the sun in relation to the time of the day has a higher or lower density. And you can also change the size in PX and the print size. At this point, we can delete certain part of the rendering to bring some elements shown in the photo to the foreground. In fact, we can use a photo retouching tool, clicking on this button that opens a new editor. As always, use the transparency tool to help identify background features that we want to bring to foreground. Simply draw the perimeter with a left mouse click and close it with a right click. Let's see how it works for the van here for the car, for the switchboard here, and for the lighting pole. Finishing off this outline process, we can confirm the final result with a click on the confirm button. Other rendering facilities include the camera objects to create different view and scene of our buildings. Once selected from the object menu, a first click inserts the camera, and with a second click, we can set its viewing direction. At this point, the software will create a perspective view that can be easily edited to get the best observation point. Here we can move or walk within the scene, rotate the view and increase or decrease the zoom. There are also features that allow us to change the scene lighting intensity. Looking at the preview windows, we can check if lighting is correct, so in a few seconds we get a first image of the rendered scene. As you can see in the first preview, lightning seems to be too intense, so we will change this parameter adjusting our lightning so as to get another preview in a few seconds after which we can evaluate to launch a final high quality rendering. And what about documents and tables? Let's see how to create entity tables of the object used in our project. We have already seen various summary tables with data relating to our rooms, envelopes, doors, but we can also create a customized table. By right-clicking on the Tables and Schedules section, we can choose Add, and we will see all the objects used in our project. Let's see what we can do with the rooms. We can customize this view, we can view or hide certain columns, change the tile of the tables, we can also change other information such as showing zone L1, the group, the type, or other information that can be useful to us. After customization we can click the end button. Now we can make groups for the various levels. Simply drag the column tile to this line and the grouping is organized according to the basement first and ground floor level. It is possible to obtain data by adding a group footer. A new row will appear below each grouping and with a right click you will even be able to sum up values. Here we get the Saria sum for all the rooms or we can add the total footer and choose an operation. And here we have the sum of all the rooms in this project. 
In this way, we can create endless tables with infinite customization. All these tables can be added to a working drawing using the classic drag and drop function. Here is our table with all the data and groupings chosen so far. Now let's open another project to see how to deal with renderings and real-time rendering. Let's add a perspective view by doing a right mouse button click on the 3D node and choose Add Perspective. And choose Add Perspective. We have two main viewing methods, the orbit and the first person view. We can activate a 360 panorama background photo and activate shadows and realistic view. Choose whether or not to have our lighting on. And we can add a photo that allows us to save this shoot for later renderings. Now click on the start button. As seen before, we can generate a preview render before generating the height quality version. This allows us to make any final adjustment to settings, to position, etc. etc. Once the rendering process has completed, we get this type of result. As you can see, we have two renderings with two different lighting effects. For each render it is possible to activate this editing tool, which allows us to change the brightness, the gamma, the color balance and so on. And eventually to apply filters. Let's see how to move within the perspective. We can move backward and forward using the left mouse button or by holding down the mouse wheel button we can rotate the view too. With the mouse wheel we can zoom in or out of the model. Within this perspective it is possible to add a photo shoot by clicking on this button to create animations and then record them by clicking on this rec button here. But we will see the same function within the real-time rendering environment. So let's see this advanced view in mode, the real-time rendering view. With a right click on the real-time rendering node, we will choose Add Real-time Rendering. In the real-time rendering view, we again have the chance to choose between orbit and first-person view. Probably the most fascinating feature is that we can create video by simply setting up a camera pathway made up of multiple photo shoot, at least three. Let's see a previously prepared photo reel already made. Starting from this photo, if we click on the play button and choose an appropriate speed, you can see that the path created inside our building forms a video sequence. This animated path can of course be recorded as a video. We can modify the settings by recording from a reel or live with the appropriate frame rate. Or by changing the screen resolution and then saving our video in the AVI format. Then we have the visual effects that we can apply to our real-time rendering view. All of us to activate the different type of effects. We can activate fog, so we can choose the density, increase or decrease it, and the fall, the initial distance, and the opacity. Then we have the rain, and this effect shows the falling rain into our scene, even adding the wet textures. The wind effect with variable intensity. And as you can see, as we increase the intensity, the leaves react accordingly. The lighting section allows us to increase or decrease lightning, both direct and environmental lighting. An interesting effect for our scene is the dynamic depth of field. By simply clicking on objects, we can set the focal point where we will see objects correctly in focus, while other areas will be shown blurred and out of focus. The lens setting allows us to choose a bloom effect, which is the effect of the sun that enters the lens, with signs and intensity settings. Then we have the light and exposure. 
the audio effects such as background sound and the dynamic grass effects that can be applied to textures configured with the terrain category. For example, here we see a flat texture and if we activate the grass and activate this box to identify which part we are applying the effect on, we can see the different settings to increase the quantity of a given essence, to increase its density, height or size. In addition, you can add a tint to the color of the trees to blend them into the surrounding environment. Jumping into this example, I want to show you another useful function, the Shadow Manager system. Whether we are in real-time view or 3D or perspective view, we have the chance to see and manage the shadowing of our model. As for reality, shadows depend on geographic position and naturally are related to the season and position of the sun during the day. Those are all options that we can easily manage from this proper window and with this option we can have the chance to see what is the position of the shade at any time for each object in our scene and eventually enjoy a beautiful sunset.